hari ini. Happy Sabbath, brothers, sisters, visitors, and friends, and welcome to the Andrews Memorial Seventh Day Adventist Church platform. Here, broadcasting from 29 Hope Road, where hope lives. We invite you to join with us this and every Sabbath for online and in-person worship services designed for your spiritual nurture and growth. We begin each Sabbath with our first service worship experience in the Word, a rich musical expose at 8 o'clock. And then we go into our church at study, Sabbath school, followed by our second service, where we'll have another spoken word and, of course, rich music and prayer. We invite you to join us this afternoon and every other Sabbath afternoon for our afternoon Bible study class beginning at 3.30 p.m. And then, to top things off, come and for the exciting Adventist Youth Hour where our youth will be engaged in mission and focused on ministry. Come and worship Happy Sabbath to you online as we come into the house of God to worship this morning. I'm asking that we just remove everything from our minds that is unlike Christ so that we might be filled with the Holy Spirit today. We're going to commence our praise and worship with prayer. Let us pray. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for carrying us through another week, a week that may have been filled with many challenges or many victories, but regardless, we are here now to worship you. We thank you for your Sabbath day of rest, where we can lay all our burdens down at your feet. We thank you again for the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, and through him we can have the free gift of salvation. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit now to worship and tabernacle with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to be doing three beautiful hymns. And for you online, I'll share hymn 92, This Is My Father's World, 93, All Things Bright and Beautiful, and we end with, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love, 183. Hymn 92, This Is My Father's World. father's world and to my listening ears all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is my father's world I rest me and sees his hands the wonders wrought. This is my father's world. The birds their carols raise. The morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world. Oh, let me so strong God is 
Come on, congregation, sing with us. This is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. church purple headed mountain the river running by the sunset and the morning presence of the sky the cold wind in the winter the pleasant sun in the garden he made them everyone let's go back to the chorus beautiful all creatures great and small all things wise and wonderful the Lord God made them all and the next verse he gave us eyes to see him and lives that we might tell how great is God Almighty who has made all things well. Sing. small all things wise and wonderful the Lord God made them all Amen. Amen I will sing of Jesus love sing of him who first loves me 183 
Sabbath church God is good and all the time amen now as we come before the Lord this morning we are admonished and encouraged to wait upon him waiting upon the Lord is actively watching for a time event or opportunity to act for the Lord and then acting to accomplish his revealed will. This waiting is akin to watching, and it is like looking at life through the lens of Christ's active love for us. In this way of active observance, the Christian is like a servant who carefully watches what his master is doing and then acts from his observations to facilitate his master's work. As we will celebrate Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection in the upcoming communion service, it is important that we fix our attention on him and not on ourselves. Not on our religious activities or works, but instead, let us concentrate on him and worship him. I now invite Sister Curlew to do our opening prayer. Happy Sabbath, everyone, here and online. Happy Sabbath. We give you thanks. We give you praise, my Lord, my God, and my Savior. You are our Lord and our God and our Redeemer. We are preparing for you, my God, knowing that your time is near. We are all here and online because we believe in you. Because our soul cries out for your protection and your mercy for your coming day. We ask, my God and my Savior, for forgiveness of our sins. We ask for your mercies that is from everlasting to everlasting. We bring to you, Jesus, every... Please stand, everybody. Please stand. We bring to you, my God, we represent our family, every one of our family here and online. We present them. We present the sick ones. We ask for your touch from heaven and your mercies. We ask, my Lord, my God, and my Savior, to remove the attack that is upon your children here on earth. You said you are with us, my God, until the end. You said, ask and it shall be given. You said, seek and ye shall find. You said, knock and the door shall be open. We thank you, Father, for opening your hallelujah, your doors unto us. We thank you, Jehovah God, that your blood that was shed from that cross we thank you, Father, that it will wash, cleanse, and make us whole. We thank you, Jehovah God, that Satan shall not have the right upon us. He shall not prevail. He shall not prevail. He shall not prevail. You're a liar, Satan. You shall not prevail over the souls of God's children. We know, my God, we have no perfection. 
We know not one of us are 100% perfect, but we know for sure. You said, my God, though your sins are like crimson sins, my blood will wash and cleanse and make you white as snow. We look to you, Jesus Christ, this day for our children, who is more valuable, my God, to the enemies to attack. We ask that this attack will not will not, will not ever prevail over our children, from the youngest to the oldest of our children. We look to you for mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. Let they see you. Let they focus on you, my God. So they will know the right from the wrong and walk in the right way. We all ask you, Jesus Christ. We all come at your feet that not one soul will be lost. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our pastors and their children. We pray for our elders. We pray for our deacon and our deaconess. We pray for our Bible workers. We pray for our prayer band who keep this church going in prayer day and night. Our prayer band to the series with prayer that and we pray with him. We come here at nights. We pray and we close with him after. We are there all the time for you, my sisters and brothers. We pray for the church members. We pray, dear God, for our sister and our brothers, our children and our grandchildren, our cousins, our friends. We are saying this day, my God, we are saying this day that your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Our sick ones, we ask, Lord, quietly we come to you for mercy upon them. Whatsoever the sickness is, whether it's diabetes, whether it's AIDS, whether it's HIV, whether it's uh, malnutrition, whatsoever it is, eyesight, whatsoever. We ask for the removal of these things, Lord, because you said to ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find and knock on the door shall be opened. So we bring it all to you. Father in heaven, thank you for a blessed Sabbath that we all can meet here and we all can be in line because you said, my God, you will never leave us or forsake us. I remember the last time you said to me, it's a Satan attack. I am with you. We must always remember the love of Christ. We always remember the cross, that love that he has for us we must never ever forget father we all love you but you love us more than we could ever think we thank you for that cross we thank you for that blood that was shed thank you for those who have their birthday today happy birthday to my dear friend Yvonne too wherever you are friends and family England, New York, Canada, wherever in the States, here in Jamaica, wherever you are, we are praying for you. And the Lord said, ask and it shall be given. And this is what is happening now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Father. May you bless us all. Amen. Amen. We now call on Sister, on Brother Kimani Nugent to do our World Mission Report. Happy Sabbath, Church. Today's mission story comes from the country of India, and it is entitled Teen with a Mission. Nathan was six years old when his family returned home to India after serving as, mission, as missionaries in Lebanon. He was a small boy and didn't have any interest in missionaries or mission work. But things changed when Nathan was 12. He became fascinated by the children's mission stories that he heard Sabbath after Sabbath in church. Soon he began to read and sometimes even the youth and adult mission quarterly. As he read the stories, 
longed to do something for God. He thought, God can use children the same age as me and even younger. Why can't he use me as a mission? A year passed. Two years passed. Years passed. Nathan was 50, and he still felt like he hadn't done anything for God in mission. Then COVID-19 pandemic shut down India for months. Nathan's father was a pastor, and at the request of parents, organized an online Bible study for teens stuck at home locked down. The online group quickly grew to 15 teens, and a number of little children under 10 also joined in. Nathan heard his father tell his mother, smaller ones aren't fitting in, the, aren't fitting in. The group has two distinct levels. As Nathan laid in bed that night, felt impressed to start a Bible group for younger children. At breakfast, he shared his thoughts with his parents. They welcomed the idea and encouraged him to start right away. Nathan excitedly looked the home library for materials. He decided for each meeting he would read a Bible story from author Maxwell, the Bible story, and led a short Bible study from Linda Coe's God, Love, God Loves Me. God blessed the efforts. Two of the children were joining the Bible group from around the neighborhood and even other parts of India. Up to 12 children joined each week. Nathan enjoyed leading the Bible group. He felt like God was finally using him for mission, but he longed to do something more. As COVID-19 restrictions were being lifted, about a year later, he learned a sermon about a terminally ill girl prayed for friends. Prayed for friends, neighbors, and even missionaries in faraway lands. The preacher said the girl prayed for only three months before she died but her prayers made a big difference in many lives. Nathan thought, I also should pray. I can pray for my classmates, friends, and teens in my neighborhood. Nathan classes were resumed at the Seventh-day Adventist school where Nathan studied, and many of his classmates belonged to non-Christian religion. Nathan wondered who to pray for. He decided to pray for those who seemed most open to Christianity, they seemed to be more fertile soil. Nathan noticed that one boy, Aaron, enjoyed singing at morning worship and listened attentively to worship talks. He began to pray for Aaron. One day, he said to Aaron, I'm happy that you are interested in Christian things. Aaron smiled broadly. I love singing these songs. He said. Long ago, I accepted Jesus as one of my gods. Nathan wanted to know more. Why did your parents choose this Christian school for you, he asked. We live on a farm out in the country, he said. The only school bus that comes close to our house is, is the Adventist school bus. The conversation started a special friendship between Nathan and Aaron. Whenever possible, Nathan told him about his love for Jesus, prayed that those seeds would bear fruit. While Nathan spoke about Jesus with Aaron, another boy named Jai was enthusiastically telling his classmates about the power and goodness of the gods that he worshipped. Jai was zealous for his family's faith. He wore ritual markings on his forehead every day. Jai even spoke to Nathan about his gods. Nathan decided not to pray for Jai. Then one day, Nathan played the keyboard at worship, and Jai was impressed with his skill. He praised Nathan and asked if he would play a song from his own religion on the key. Politely, Nathan said, I'm sorry, I only play Christian music. Jai didn't say anything to Nathan for several months. Nathan kept praying for other classmates and rejoiced as he saw God touching hearts. Then one day, Jai came over to Nathan and abruptly said, Teach me the Lord's Prayer. Nathan couldn't believe his ears. Jai hadn't seemed, to, seemed like the fertile soil worth praying for, but there he was, asking to learn the Lord's Prayer. Nathan began sharing his love for Jesus with Jai. As time passed, he noticed that Jai stopped talking about his gods. Sometimes he even came to school without the markings on his forehead. Our Lord has moved Jai from being an opposer to a searcher of truth. Nathan said, I believe that I, would, 
that it wouldn't be long before Jai finds the truth, and surely the truth will set him free. Nathan is confident that God is using him for mission, and he is praying to do even more. Thank you for your Sabbath school mission offering today that will help spread the gospel in India and Nepal. Seven of the 10 13 Sabbath projects involve Adventist schools like the one where Nathan studies. Thank you for your generous offering. Amen. And we just want to ask the Lord to touch Brother Kimani. As you see, maybe you would have noticed that he's not feeling so well, yet he persevered through the World Mission Report so that God could be honored this morning. I will now ask our unit leaders to stand as it is shepherding time. And I'd like to acknowledge our very hardworking, beautiful communications team and ask you to place five minutes on the clock for us. So unit leaders, Please go ahead, shepherd your units. Thereafter, we will have the beautiful Elder Trevine Little leading us with a lesson in one for 25 minutes. So you can just put 30 minutes on the clock, communications team. Thank you so much. And the unit leaders who have not yet collected your quarterlies, they are available. Our secretaries, our hardworking secretaries have them ready for you. Do have a wonderful study. Uh, let us pray. I'm sorry. Dear kind and loving Father who art in heaven, we want to thank you for today. We thank you for waking us up this morning and for taking us into your sanctuary once more to study your word. Be with us now. Send your Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
right, teachers, we're going to give you one minute to wrap up. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. No, man. Let me try that again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's a pleasure to be in God's church today, isn't it? Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we have been waiting on you. And we know that you can't wait to be reunited with us. Be with us as we go through our lesson review. And help us to fall in love with you all over again, for Christ's sake. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we've been waiting 13 weeks to get to this point, haven't we? And you won't have to wait more than 15 minutes thereabouts for me to get through this lesson review, but I need your help. Waiting on the Lord. Would you agree with me that sometimes we don't like to wait? Talk to me, brothers and sisters. We are intolerant many times to waiting, aren't we? Sometimes we find waiting distasteful, yes? Sometimes as we wait, we consider what economics or economists call opportunity cost. The other thing that we could have been doing had we not been waiting. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? These are some of the thoughts we contemplate while we wait. Additionally, sometimes we undergo tough situations. And so waiting becomes frustrating and exceedingly sad. But the psalmist in Psalm chapter 7 tells us to do what? To be of good courage. To be strengthened. Wait on the Lord. And I say, Amen. In Psalm chapter 37, the psalmist also tells us, don't fret. Don't be concerned with what your enemies are doing. I will handle them. I will cut them off. And I say, Amen. It means that we don't have to fight our battles. This weight that we're talking about is not pregnant with waste. Are you with me? We're not wasting time as we wait for the Lord. Romans 8 tells us very clearly that God has the intention to transition us from the bondage of corruption and give us the liberation that is consistent between us being sons and daughters of God. And I say, Amen. God has promised to give us freedom. He wants to move us from glory to glory. Can I see the mothers in church today? Let me see your hands. And we remember that one of the courses of the Garden of Eden was birth pains. Yes? But talk to me. After going through the agony of being in labor, doesn't that pain pale in comparison, Sister Little, L-Y Little, when you see your child? Do you remember all of that pain? Is, am I talking to someone this morning? It pales in comparison when you hear that jubilant noise from that child. And for those of you who perhaps have adopted, you have gotten so many no's. You've been through so much bureaucracy. Someone promised that they would allow you to adopt a child, and at the last minute they have said, no, it is painful. But now that you have your child, doesn't all of that pain pale in comparison to having your child? Can someone say amen? And so what God is trying to say to us this morning is that whatever suffering you may be undergoing in your life, it is nothing in comparison to the glory that he has reserved and prepared for you. The suffering of this life is temporary. And if we could see the hope, then it would not be hope. Hope has to be something unseen. And we have the hope that the wait is worth it. 
This wait is not a place for idlers, brothers and sisters. Amen? We are not expected to be like the apostles who are looking into the sky, wondering when Jesus is coming again. The angel who saw them told them it's time to get to work. You need to go to Jerusalem so the Spirit of the Lord can speak to you so you can be mobilized for work. Psalm chapter 131 tells us that this weight is not the arena for haughtiness and arrogance. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? It's not a time to be full of ourselves. The psalmist uses the imagery of a weaned child. Mothers and fathers, do you remember when you gave your child their first bottle and how they seemed so independent holding their bottle? or holding their spoon. Do you remember those moments? But that child who was exhibiting a little independence, wouldn't they still want to be held by you and cuddled by you? Have you forgotten? And in the same way, we also need the comfort of our Heavenly Father. But allow us to go a little deeper. The reason why children have to be weaned, I'm told, I have read. <laughs> the reason why children have to be weaned is because the milk cannot sustain a growing child after a certain point in time, Sister Blake. There are certain nutrients and vitamins that they need as they grow that they will not get from the milk. Brothers and sisters, if we are interested in growing in grace, in taking our spiritual development to the next level, we can't be supping on the meals that we were supping on when we first came in the church. Amen? This is not a wait for idlers. This is a wait where we are supposed to be actively working in the church, within and without. We are supposed to be involved in ministry. I'll give you a quick story because you seem like you're sleeping this morning. My, uh, my niece, Safia, we were having trouble potty training her. She had no transition from diapers to pull-ups. And the child was aware that she needed to go to the restroom, but she wouldn't. And one fateful day, her older brother had an accident. And the first person to declare that he had an accident was the same person who is still wearing pull-ups. Brothers and sisters, some of us are inactive and we are talking about things in ministry that are not going well. But if all of us were engaged in ministry, then it would show that we are all weaned. During this way, God needs brothers and sisters who are metaphorically weaned and potty trained. And I say, Amen. This is not a time for idlers. Our very consciousness must change. And if our divine consciousness changes, it will propel us to work for the Lord. We're going quickly. This weight is guaranteed to return a harvest. And I say amen. Psalm chapter 26 is rich with agrarian imagery of farmers, people who are sowing, do you feel as if you have been sowing in tears and not seeing any returns? Do you feel as if you're going through a situation and you cannot see the end in sight? But the Spirit of the Lord is saying that your harvest will not return empty. The Spirit of the Lord is saying that everyone will return with green. And I say, Amen. It may be long, but we will not return empty-handed. You know, brothers and sisters, today, at the age of 100, Abraham's urologist would have said to him, there is no chance for you. In today's day, Sarah, barren, incapable of producing a child, and you may feel as if your situation is just as dismal, but God is here to say to you, that he is able to return an investment on your faith. And I say, Amen. God doesn't just return an investment. 
He returns my brother from investment, a more than proportionate increase on your investment. God always overperforms. Your harvest will have grain, brothers and sisters. After the wait, God has promised that he will redeem the faithful. Psalm chapter 91 tells us that there is a special blessing for the people of God. Do you believe that? You don't sound like you believe it. Do you believe that there is a special blessing reserved for the people of God? If you look in Psalm chapter 92 verse 13, it speaks about the people who are planted in the house of God. Are we planted in the house of God this morning, brothers and sisters? Absolutely. And the psalmist promises that what God will do for us, Sister Blake, he will flourish you like a palm tree. You will grow like the cedar tree in Lebanon. Let me tell you about the cedar tree in Lebanon. When King Solomon was building that great temple for the Lord, they got cedars from Lebanon. The cedars were of such a high grade that when they were hewn down, they allowed them to float along the Mediterranean Sea like rafts. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? God is comparing you to high-grade lumber. He's saying that you have pedigree, you're not a mongrel. He is saying that the people of God will flourish. Is somebody with me this morning? Psalmist has something to say to the older people in church as well, Sister Cunningham. He says, even the older ones, you will flourish and you will bear much fruit. Isn't God good? We can wait because joy comes in the morning. Amen. Psalm chapter 5 tells us, I will direct my voice in the morning to you. Psalm chapter 30 tells us, weeping may endure, but comes in the morning. Death shall feed on us in this life. But the psalmist tells us that the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. On this holy weekend, we are reminded that our Father, our God said, I have the power to lay down my life and pick it up again. That's what the boss of the universe said. That is what deity said. That's what a big God said. I can lay down my life voluntarily and I can pick it up at will. I want to thank the Lord that he told Mary Magdalene to anoint him with spices six days before the Passover. I want to thank the Lord for inspiring Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea when they took him off the cross to not only lay him in the sepulcher, but to anoint his body with spices because, Sister Blake, because, Brother Tullerid, it was a complete waste of time for Mary and Salome to go and purchase spices on the Saturday night. Because when they arrived at the breaking of dawn, joy had already come in the morning. Because before the breaking of dawn, Jesus had already gotten up. And I say, Amen. Brothers and sisters, I have 12 minutes on the clock, so allow me to get a little excited with the desire of ages, what it says about this account. You see, when Jesus was laid in the sepulcher, there were evil angels who were trying to get entrance. They were trying to do bad things, but we are told that good angels were on the scene. We were told that angels excelling in strength and power were guarding the sepulcher. But more than that, we are told about the angel of the Lord. We are told that the angel of the Lord's countenance, Sister Carol, looked like lightning. Because it was illuminated having been in the presence of a living God. We are told that when that angel touched down on the ground, there was an earthquake. We are told that he kicked the stone of the sepulcher like it was a pebble. And he said, son of God, come forth. Brothers and sisters, we have all lost loved ones, haven't we? But the hope 
that we have during this wait, that joy cometh in the morning. And I say amen. It was an earthquake that was a death knell for Jesus on the cross. Another earthquake to herald the fact that Jesus was to be resurrected. And when he returns, there will be another earthquake. And it won't be felt in Jamaica or Trinidad and Tobago. It will shake the entire earth. Brothers and sisters, this lesson is here to renew our hope and tell us that we have something to look forward to. As I close, because we are tight for time today, every time I plan a trip, an exotic trip, I make sure I have the relevant visas, right? I make sure that I have my relevant shots. I make sure that the itinerary is solid. Ladies, I make sure that my carry-on bag is in my bigger bag because you know when we're returning what it's going to look like. I make sure I have my mobile plan so I can stay in contact. I make sure I have enough chargers. I make sure I have all the details planned. I am not concerned if the flight is late because I know where I'm going. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? I know that I'm going to a great place, so I'm anticipating it. So while I wait, I'm busily doing other things because I know that the flight is coming. Brothers and sisters, we need to operate with anticipation. Are we together? We cannot afford to think that we have time to stargaze, that we have time just to put on our pretty clothes and come to church and go home and then come back next Sabbath again. There is work to be done, and God is not interested in indolence. It's not cute. God is not interested in us being at the same stage as we were when we were in the children's division. Our spiritual knowledge would have expanded. And with the expansion of our knowledge, it means that we must be doing more for the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to be like one of those five foolish virgins who was in the right spot at the right time, but unprepared. This is the time for us to shake up ourselves. God has already done all that he needs to do. And we can trust his credibility. When he says he's coming back again, we can trust him. It is my desire, it is the prayer of my heart for all of us to get ourselves in order. This is not a wasteful wait. This is not an idle wait. Because joy is coming in the morning. May God bless you. Amen. Joy is coming in the morning and joy will be coming to do our welcome this morning. I know that based on our program, you saw Loy Samuels. She is not here. It is Loy Lawrence who will welcome us this morning. Happy Sabbath, church. Uh, this morning, I have an acronym for you. So please listen. W, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. B, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Thankful unto him and bless his name. L, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. C, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. O, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. M, may you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. E, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And this acronym spells welcome. I want to welcome all our visitors this morning and our regular members as well. Please have a blessed
It is my distinct privilege and pleasure this morning to thank those who have led out in our Sabbath school. We'd like to thank Sister Pauline Curlew, Brother Kimani Nugent, Sister, jo Sister Joy, or Sister Loy Lawrence for leading out this morning. We know that the Lord would add a portion of blessings to you because you have led out in his work. As we continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, remember that waiting on the Lord is serving the Lord in whatever role he has chosen for us, in spite of what we want or think. It is faithfully discharging the duties of one who is called by Christ to serve in trial, hardship, and persecution. It is being willing to let Christ teach us lessons of humility, reliance on our Heavenly Father, and even serving the best interests of one who we might consider an enemy. Waiting on the Lord is dying daily to what we think we need to have, what we need to do, and what we need to say, and being a blessing to those that God places in our lives, even those who curse and abuse us. We must always have before us the scripture, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Please stand as we sing this song. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, Teach me, Lord, how to wait. Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed day. See you next week. Bye from Sabbath School. Let the Church of the Living God say amen. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Let's go again. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. I want to welcome everyone, especially those who are online to our worship service today, our visitors who are here in audience, and to all of you as brothers and sisters taking the journey with us to the promised land. What do you say? Today is communion Sabbath, and we are very happy that we can be able to go back to Calvary's cross where we experience afresh and anew the gift of salvation given to us by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This morning, we're going to be doing three things for pastor's time. Number one, we're going to take Angels Connect. The second, we're going to be doing our right hand of fellowship. And after that, we'll be doing a special exercise based on what you see behind me. At this time, Angels Connect. All right, going to invite Sister Stacy Bailey to join me here at this time as our elders come as well, our musicians, going to ask you to tune your various instruments as we sing together. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. As the elders come, we're going to be doing the right hand of fellowship for a number of new Andrew's members, transfers, and by way of transfer and baptisms here at Andrew's Memorial. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. I am pleased to invite our recently baptized members to come forward to be received into fellowship. Um, I will go through the names very quickly in the interest of time. Dwayne Jackson, 
Sala Randall, Ricardo Thomas, Christopher White, Alicia Campbell, Kemar Walker, Earl Cook, Volney McDove, Imani Wright, Marian Spence, Janine Green, Anne Marie Wright, Alicia Thomas, Shana Barton, Sheroy Winter, Patricia Patterson, Monique Linton, Evelyn Palmer, Noel Jackson, Marcia Montague, Jelani Sutherland, Dominic Blake, and Tel Tel Tev Telvin, pardon me, Malcolm. Those are the names of our newly baptized members. Let the amen. church say amen. Amen. Some of our newly baptized members and my elders are now in position. And so I'm going to ask Mr. Tchaikovsky to start with this playing of that song. I'm so glad he's here, man. He's back. I'm a part of the family of God. We will do the right hand of fellowship from the right to the left and when this is done then we have another listing to welcome other members into the house of God Travel this side. 
I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Amen. We are happy to receive our newly baptized members into fellowship. So this is now the second reading for some of our incoming transfers to be received into fellowship immediately after. So I will start with Brother Wilbert Dallas. He, his transfer is coming from Hagley Park SDA Amen. and coming to Andrews Memorial SDA. Amen. Sister Nadine Campbell, incoming transfer from Spur Tree SDA to, to Andrews Memorial SDA. And Sister Ojade Thomas, incoming transfer from Bonnie Gate SDA to Andrews Memorial SDA. I so move the motion for our brother and sisters to be accepted into the fellowship of Andrews Memorial SDA Church to be a part of our family. The motion is on the floor. Is there a second? It has been seconded. I'm um, going to ask you to turn and face the congregation. Those who are in favor, that brother Wilbert Dallas be accepted as a member of the Andrews Memorial, please show by uplifted right hand. Those who are in favor, that sister Nadine Campbell be accepted as a member of the Andrews Memorial, please show by the uplifted right hand. And those who are in favor, that Sister Ajade Thomas be accepted as a member here at the Andrews Memorial, please show that lifted right hand. Any opposed to any of these joining us? It is carried. Brothers and sisters, I'm so glad we're going to welcome them now into Andrews Memorial with the right hand of fellowship. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. singing and greeting to do we have some previously read transferred trans incoming transfers they were read twice already so we're just going to invite sister Flo Cox sister Kamisha Miller and sister Dor Dorothy Bailey Smith to come forward to be received into fellowship amen Whoa! 
say amen we welcome all our new members to the Andrews Memorial SDA Church family and you would notice that there are some individuals who are long-standing established members who are now being formally accepted into the rules of the church and so we welcome one and we welcome all and we wish that your journey with us to the promised land will be beneficial not just for your own soul, but for the souls of those with whom you come in contact. At this time, we go to Andrews Connect. Good morning and happy right. Sabbath. Thank Welcome you. to Andrews Connect, where you connect with the church through our mission-focused activities. These are the notices and announcements for today and the upcoming week. The Spanish church will join the English-speaking church for communion service today. At 3.30 p.m., Pastor Byron Anglin will host the Back to Basics Bible class. The Adventist youth program will be done by the David Band under the theme, The Heart of David. And we close out the Sabbath with Vespers, which will be done by Elder Oswald Smith. On Sunday, all are invited to our Sunday evening service on the Zoom platform. And our speaker this week is Elder Audrey Corodas. Join us on Monday evening as we walk in the word live on our YouTube channel, Andrews Memorial SDA Church. On Wednesday, all are invited to our weekly noonday prayer session from noon to 2 p.m. Also on Wednesday, all Adventist Mission Hub leaders and participants are invited to our hub meeting at 7 p.m. on the Zoom platform. Please see credentials on your screen. Pastor O's Advent Message Bible class is on this and every Thursday at 7 p.m. on the Zoom platform. You see credentials on your screen. For all matters related to clerkship, including membership transfers, infant dedications, and baptism certificates, please contact us using the email address amsdachurchclerk at gmail.com. The Adventist Youth Ministries Department is reminding all members to study the weekly morning watch and come prepared to recite it at AY in the Sabbath. Pick up, Joshua. The Adventist Youth Ministries Department is reminding all members to study the weekly morning watch to recite during AY on Sabbath afternoons. The Children and Adolescent Ministries Department is asking all members for a special offering to support the activities of the department. The children will be collecting lamb's offering during Children's Corner, and we're asking for a generous offering. Finally, let's get moving and join the Health Ministries Department for exercise on the terrace this and every Saturday night right after Vespers. Please note the following upcoming activities. April 7 will be board meeting at 7 a.m. in the youth room. April 7 to 13 will be public affairs and religious liberty week. 
April 14, Women's Ministries Morning Glory Moments at 6 a.m. at Emancipation Park. April 20 to 27, Family Life Series with Pastor Nathaniel Garcia, the Family Ministries Director at the South Atlantic Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Please continue to pray for the following persons. On behalf of the Andrews family, we are sending condolences to Sister Nye Harris Stubbs and family, Brother Ransford Ricketts and family, and Sister Sharon Palmer Creary and family. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. And we're sending happy birthday greetings to our celebrants this week. Monica Walker, Sylvia Livingston, they celebrated on March 24. Hezron Brown, Hugh Henry, and Alzi Downs, they celebrated on March 25. Michael Allen, Cecile Cooper, and Garfield Goldburn, they celebrated on March 27. And on March 28, Alison Kelly and Conrad Walker celebrated their special day. And on March 30, Carl Moxham celebrated his day. And we're sending anniversary greetings to Sylvan and Tamika Barton. They celebrated their anniversary on March 27. Remember to connect with us on our YouTube channel, Facebook platform, or Instagram. And also like, share, and subscribe. Please do enjoy the rest of the Sabbath. Thank you very much, Sister Kadish Fletcher and our communications team for our once more giving us Andrews Connect. Just before we do the last exercise with our elders and two of our children, I want to let you know next week Sabbath. When did I say, brethren? Next week Sabbath, the first Sabbath in the month of April, the month before the best month of the year. Andrews Memorial Hospital will be celebrating 80 years of existence. Amen? Amen? And they will be starting their 80th year journey right here with us at Andrews Memorial SDA Church. And uh, as you would expect, we will start at 11 o'clock sharp and our speaker will be the president of Jamaica Union who is the chairman of the board of the Andrews Memorial Hospital, Pastor Everett Brown. So we're going to be asking you next week to work with our teams in relation to our parking or parking as well as seating arrangements. Ahead of time, by Wednesday of this week, we're going to give you the clear instructions in relation to parking so that individuals won't feel displaced at any time on Sabbath morning. So first service participants, that will be okay. And then for the second service, we will be having blocked areas for parking. And there will be specific areas for entry as well as for exit for particular individuals. So we want to make sure that we manage the traffic flow. And that is why you will be getting a clear indication as to the blocked areas from early in the week so as to facilitate the smoothest possible arrangement. Also, want to remind you that we will have parking available at 25, do I have that right? Hope Road, 25 Hope Road. So there will be some changes next week on grounds here in terms of exit, in terms of where you may be able to park, and we'd like you to bear that in mind. Um, Elder Giles, hopefully I would have covered all the ground to facilitate your first service here as CEO, as CEO um, at Andrews Memorial Hospital. Brothers and sisters, as we close pastor's time today, we want to pause to give God thanks for his goodness towards us here at Andrews Memorial. Let me go again. We want to pause to give God thanks for his goodness towards us here at Andrews Memorial. You will see a deliberate, intentional approach being taken to ensure that we transition, that we combine, that we blend to reflect the new era in which we are.
both with music. You see Tchaikovsky and uh, Drummer Boy and Beethoven. We soon need more space for the Andrews Music University Orchestra that will be expanding as we go along. Amen? Amen. And so we give God thanks for we dedicated those items last week and we're grateful that they are in order. Today, we are going a step further because communication is the order of the day and new communication tools are the order of the day. Today, well, before I get to today, we have purchased for communication and received as gifts between the two of them, Elder Murray, um, worship computer and two monitors on the balcony. The Pro Presenter software and Open LP software. We have bought two new large televisions for the sanctuary. And we have also bought four small televisions for the Sabbath School Rooms, Sister Holmes, Amen. as well as for eras in the church office. Amen. And I must say that we are moving very much in tandem to ensure that the children's ministries areas of the church are fully supplemented with technology that can aid the teachers in their delivery of the scriptures. Amen. That's where we're going next. But today, if you look behind me, you will see a new screen. Amen. That is our digital screen. And as the world advances, we church also has to ensure it integrates the best practices and the best tools to help in sharing the gospel and the good news. Amen. And so today, we have two children who are going to be representing the future of Andrew's church. And they will be cutting the ribbon. Not yet though, Sister um, Nugent, she's just positioning them that nothing else happens. But we're going to invite the church to stand with us at this moment as we do the prayer of consecration, after which the screen will be turned on and you will see for the first time the Andrews Memorial digital screen which will aid in our ministry here in service to God and our fellow men. Let's bow our heads. Sovereign God, we are cognizant of the fact that the three angels of Revelation 14 depict and represent the closing message to be brought to an end time world. It is not lost on our minds that you have committed to us a great task of seeking and saving that which is lost before time runs out on planet earth. And so we come to you with that great recognition. And we say thanks to you for the gifts and the tools and the resources that you provide to give the wind a mighty voice. We are grateful. We are thankful to you for the provisions that you have made and that you continue to make for the growth and the advancement of your cause. And today, we give you thanks for this digital screen. Thanks for allowing this church to be able to acquire this tool to advance visual communication of your gospel message. May you bless it even now. May you consecrate this and the other items that we have received and that we have purchased for the development of your church. May you bless it to your name's honor and glory. We commend it into your care and we pray that you may pilot its usage to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I invite you to look to the screen. There's a ribbon there. And 
There are two scissors. The elders are going closer or to the side. And we are going to count. And as Jesus said, let there be. Let the church say amen. And that's the Adventist logo. Welcome everyone to the new era of digital ministry here at the Andrews Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church. Over the decades, we have been at the forefront of leading technological advancement here in the East Jamaica Conference. And in this post-pandemic era, it is no less. So today, we are happy that you are joining us live from 29 Hope Road as we unveil our new digital screen. This screen is to enrich our worship experience, the proclamation of the word, and in bringing visuals to life so that individuals who are watching online and who are here in person can have an enriched experience as we evolve in the hybrid worship experience come and join with us as we celebrate the goodness of god and it's now dedicated to the honor and glory of god may the lord bless you as we worship today in the beauty of holiness Thank you, elders. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen? Amen. All fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Our lives are worth the living just because what? He lives. So we're going to sing this song now.
Amen, church. Amen. I need a bigger amen than that one. Amen, church. Amen. Shall we stand for the call to worship? The call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 63, reading from verses 1 to 4. And it reads, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands and praise. This is the call to worship. and earth, creator of the universe, creator of this high day in Zion, yes. your blessed and holy Sabbath day, and the day when we come together to remember your Sabbath day to keep it holy. And also to remember that your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, came and shed his blood for us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for sparing our lives to see this day. We honor. We glorify and we magnify your omnipotent name. Because, Father, many things could have happened to us this week. But because of your undying love for us, yes. you kept us and brought us here because... You wanted us to come to glorify your name. Amen. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. 
And we pray, oh God, that as we go into this communion service, that you will send your sweet Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us, to be with all who will partake in this very special service, to be with the members of the church, and we pray, oh God, that at the end of the day, you will accept our worship. You will accept our praise. Be with us in a special way. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.
Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. We are now at that point in our service where we can give back to the Lord out of what he has blessed us with. So as the deaconesses prepare to collect this morning's tithes and offerings, let us pray. Abba, Father, we thank you for you are a good God. We thank you for every good gift comes from you. We thank you, Lord, for it is you who give us the ability to earn and you who give us the ability to work. And it is you who have blessed us, Lord. Father, as your faithful stewards, we are returning our tithes this morning to you, what belongs to you. And Lord, as an expression of our gratitude, we are also giving you an offering out of the increase that you have blessed us with. Father, we ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings to the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Father, I ask also that you would bless those who give and empower those who may not be in a position to give, that next time they also will be able to give and return your tithe, a tithe and offering. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. In John 13, verse 14, it says, If I then, your master, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. We are at that point in our service for the ordinance of foot washing. And at this, at, when I, during this singing of the second stanza of our hymn, we will separate. And the instructions are as follows for the separation. We invite our senior ladies to assemble in the assembly vestry to my right. Our senior men in the junior room to my left. And our ladies will assemble for foot washing in the primary room upstairs and the youth room, which are also upstairs. And for men, our men are invited to go to the early teens room. And the early teens room is accessed by exiting the building and entering from the glass door to my left. I repeat, our senior ladies will join us in the assembly vestry, our senior men in the junior room right here, our ladies in the primary room and in the youth room, and our men in the early teens upstairs, to my, to, right at the back of the building. For those of us who will remain in sanctuary, we're inviting you to sing with our choristers as they continue to praise God in hymns. And we'll all return here when we're finished washing. I now invite everyone to stand for the singing of hymn 318 and we separate at the second stanza.
I forgot to mention that we should all return by 10.30. To continue our service, we will sing number 336. There is a fountain filled with blood, number 336.
Continue with number 338, redeemed. Number 338. Proclaim it is child 
forever I am. To continue, after we have been redeemed, we will know that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. Number 522. 522. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground. When darkness seems to fade its face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered and his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand. righteousness alone for less to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand number 462 Blessed Assurance, number 462. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. What a foretaste of glory divine Here of salvation, purchase of God Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, Numbers on my side, angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect 
submission All is at rest I in my Savior am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, I'm lost in His love This is my story this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. We continue worship with the hymn number 340, Jesus Saves.
before we sing our next song, I want us to consider, brethren, that we do not celebrate Easter because every time we come to communion, we're celebrating the death of our Lord. So think about it as we sing. Let's give our, bring ourselves in a time of reverence and praise and worship for what God has done for us. So our next song 302. is number 302. Sorry. which is deeper yet. In the cross, I have been washed from sin. Deeper yet. Three sharps. Next hymn is 184, Jesus paid it all. On that cross, he did it for us. 184. Sin has left a 
Infinite man. 
Bless the Lord. I'm reminded where Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Amen. Say, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're going to close our section. We're singing hymn 337, Redeem. Let's sing about our redemption in Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue worship, we'll continue with him number 321. My Jesus, I love thee. Thank you. 
of Jesus' love. Hymn number 183. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of Him who first loved me for me left. As our as white can be made as white as I will sing, I will sing of Jesus' love and let's pray. Rescue me from danger in 
interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. Grown to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Grown to live, thy God, I love. Here's my heart, so oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? To you, O oh Lord, we come this morning with our hearts bowed down, recognizing our unworthiness, but rejoicing that in you we have a Savior, one who is able to make us whole, to cleanse us from all impurities, so now, Lord, may the desires of our hearts to be made whole, to be made clean, be manifested in your will. And may we, as we come this morning to your communion table, feel a sense of worthiness that you, have paid it all and therefore we can come freely to your table hear and answer our prayers in jesus name amen i invite us to be seated at this time as the senior choir comes to present the song of meditation, let me use this opportunity for those who are visiting to share with you that this is our communion service. We do so once per quarter and if you are a baptized member, feel free to participate in the service. A word of encouragement will come to us from our senior pastor after we have had the scripture reading and the song of meditation. Our senior pastor is well known, but I must say that he prides himself on serving fresh bread. So as we anticipate that fresh bread, we crave your prayers that the Lord will move in this place in a mighty way. At this time, we will have the scripture reading. You will follow on screen in English while it is read in Spanish. Genesis 2. Um, can you please stand? Genesis 2, 15 a 17. Y dice así. Tomó pues Jehová Dios al hombre y lo puso en el huerto de Edén, para que lo labrara y lo guardase. Y mandó Jehová Dios al hombre, diciendo, De todo árbol del huerto podrás comer. Mas del árbol de la ciencia del bien y del mal no comerás, porque el día que de él comieres, ciertamente morirás.
Let the church say amen.
Can I invite the prayer team to stand by? And to join me in singing. Thank you for the cross, Lord. If you're here for a blessing today, can I see you wave your hand? Anybody is happy for the grace of God? Join us in singing. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came. In love you came. And gave amazing grace. Thank you, thank, thank you, you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your blessed flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and on the throne Seated on the throne We crown you now We crown you now With many crowns You reign victorious For he is high and lifted up Jesus, Son of God The darling of heaven, the darling of heaven Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. One more time. Seated on the throne. Seated on the throne. We, we crown. crown you now with many crowns. You reign. You reign victorious. For you are high and lifted up. Jesus, Son. the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Can somebody bless the name of the Lord in the house today? I invite you to stand with your word in hand. I want you to read with me. From Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through to verse 13. If there's an unbeliever in here today, they must leave here knowing that we serve a living God. Amen. The third chapter of the book of Genesis, the 8th through to the 13th verse. We'll read alternately. You will read verse 8, and I will pick up on verse 9. After 2, 1, 2. Now 
Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me. And I ate. Unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Let's read verse 15 together. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his voice. Makes the difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. His voice makes the difference. When he speaks. The only voice I hear. The only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. Follow one day at a time. His voice. His voice makes a difference when he speaks. He relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear. It's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. And I'll follow one day at a time. So great shepherd of the flock of Israel, we commend ourselves into your hands this moment. Feed us with the bread from heaven. Minister to our souls through your Holy Spirit. Do that which only the God himself who has made us and redeemed us can do in the behalf of man. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Once more this week, the world stood in shock as it observed a disaster on sea. In Baltimore this week, the bridge built in 1977, which has been a sure and certain bridge across the waters for many individuals came tumbling down in a matter of seconds. One hit. One hit to one pillar and the entire bridge came tumbling down. It's a reminder to us who are left here for the remainder of our time that life can change in an instant and that things we take for granted the love of our family members the exit from our homes the return to our homes that they are miracles by God And I didn't plan to touch on that much today. 
But for weeks, the Lord has been working on my heart a particular message, Tchaikovsky. And your wife endorses that name. The Lord has been working on my heart over the last couple of weeks, deepening my understanding of the concept of the love of God. I'm, I'm in the book of Isaiah for my personal studies. But I been led time and time again back to the book of Genesis. And I just want to put a little footnote there that as Seventh-day Adventists, we fully endorse and fully believe the book of Genesis is real. At a time when scholars, so-called, in the religious world and within Christianity are calling individuals to doubt and to question the narrative account of Genesis. I stand here unapologetically to let you know Genesis is the real deal. And if we take away Genesis, we take away our heritage. If we take away Genesis, we take away our identity. If we take away Genesis, we take away the very understanding of the current times because the current times is a direct mirror of the time of Genesis. Hmm. Hmm. I know there are individuals who don't believe there is a devil. And I'm aware there are individuals who don't believe there is a God. And in case you're watching, and in case, in fact, you are even in the very precincts of the four walls of this sanctuary, I have a message for you today. There is a God in heaven. Amen. And the beautiful thing about God is that he reveals himself to man in the way that man is best able to understand and best able to appreciate. He comes down to our level. He sits in our boats. He walks on our road. He lives where we live. He knows what hunger is like. He knows what being homeless is like. He knows what it's like to be in the midst of a storm because God came in the flesh and manifested divinity in humanity. And I can go through much more of the powerful nature of God, but allow me to clothe and to uh, give the, the, the very flesh and the skeleton of this character we worship and whom we love some kind of embellishment through scripture. Because there is a story which is knocking on my heart's door. The story is about a perfect man and a perfect woman created by a perfect God placed in the midst of a perfect garden. And all that the perfect God said, all the only command that was a restrictive command, you could eat of the East Indian mango tree. I got my first bag of East Indian mangoes this week. Notice I said bag. Jamaicans have a song that we sing. We don't drink coffee tea at mango time. K 
care how nice it may be. <laughs> I said what Jamaican sing. I got my first shear, my first crop. I goodly remember understanding what taking care of her pastor means. Said, Pastor, this is the first fruits from my tree. I say, You're a good member. <laughs> the one restriction that God placed is in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. The Lord said to Adam, Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That's the word of the Lord in Genesis 2 verse 15. You don't know how we got into the mess that we got into. You don't know how the world is in the mess that it's in now. You don't understand why human nature is so filled with pride and ego and sinful living and wickedness. It's because man disobeyed the clear express command of the living God. That's how sin came here. That's how we're living in a world where there's anxiety and diabetes and, and cancer and depression and heart attack and all the different things that are engulfing the world. That's why we live in a world where there is crime and violence and there's heartache on the land and immorality and all forms of PDD behavior. All God said to the perfect man, don't touch it. Now I know my unbelieving friends are asking the question, why then would a good and a loving God have mercy? Place in the midst of a perfect garden, a tree that they were not to eat. Let me ask the question in the reverse. How could a God who believes in choice how could a God who is fully aware that evil exists around them, how could he be justified in not allowing them to make the choice? Dr. Martin Hanna, who taught me at Northern Cabin University, he made this statement I'll never forget in class one day. God is the kind of God who values freedom more than he values the absence of sin. Mercy. He would rather permit sin than take away freedom. Mercy. Repeat, repeat, repeat. God is the kind of God who values freedom more than he values the absence of sin. He prefers to allow sin to exist than to take away freedom because love allows for choice. And the moment the sovereign God of heaven uses his office and his power and his authority to stamp down on man to do this by negating his choice, he has effectively made us into robots and robbed us of genuine love towards him. And God is no Putin. So he said to Adam, eat everything. <laughs> but this tree, we don't know what is on the tree. We don't need to know on the tree. You and I know very well that um, Eve, 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 Eve. Uh, I won't expand anymore. I'll just say what the scripture says. And started a conversation with the serpent. And the serpent places a little doubt. The serpent says, has God said? And through that conversation, sin entered into the world. 
But that's not what I want to focus on today. I, I can do that another time. I want to focus on how God responded to sin. I want to talk to the parents who are struggling with their children. I want to talk to the principals who are struggling with students. I want to talk to the pastors who are struggling with members. How does a loving God respond to the evil and wickedness of sin? How does a loving God respond to the, to the fact that he has given his all? He has made perfection manifested in the midst of human experience. He has given them everything, a brain, a body. He has given them an environment. They've given them rulership and, and everything over the entire earth. And yet still, in spite of all of that, man spits in God's face. And man goes ahead and is disobedient to, to one single command. Man, how does a loving God respond to that? I have options today. If he was a good Jamaican father, that pitney would get a lot of lick. But God doesn't beat. He could have wiped them out. But the scripture says God doesn't wipe them out. The, from the very first portion of scripture, you don't even have to go further. You don't even have to go to John 3.16. There is a beautiful manifestation of the love of God in Genesis chapter 3. There is an unveiling before our eyes as to what grace is and to what mercy means. Mercy and grace is not a New Testament concept. Mercy and grace is a God concept. So from God exists grace. From God exists, compassion must flow. From God exists, there must be a manifestation, yes, of righteousness, but of righteousness mingled with grace. Now everybody in here knows, when you do something bad, we feel bad. Guilt. So Adam and Eve fell. And when they fell, the scriptures let us know, they ran. The scriptures, the scriptures let us know, they hid. The scriptures let us know that they went ahead and took fig leaves to clothe. Let me talk to you. Let me just stick a little pin right there. Fig leaf clothing cannot clothe you. Mercy, somebody not getting the message yet. I said, fig leaf clothing cannot clothe you. Drinking from the rum bar cannot clothe you. I said, living an immoral, wicked life cannot clothe you. It cannot meet the deep heart call or desires of the heart. You need something more. They ran, they ran, they hid, they got clothing. What did God do? God came. God called. God spoke. <laughs> you missed that. I said God came. God called. And God spoke. I'm going to do three patterns of threes in Genesis right now. The first pattern of three is that when God came, can I, can I just back up before I get to my first pattern of three? Can I go back to verse eight? The Bible says they heard the sound of God. You see, when you're walking with the Lord, even when you go astray, <laughs> oh Lord of mercy. I said, when you walk with the Lord, when you have spent time at the feet of the Lord, when you have spent time drinking from the fountain of life, even when you go astray, you know that voice while Saul was on the road to Damascus going to kill the church. The Bible tells us that the Lord struck him down and he says, who art thou Lord? He was on his way to persecute, on his way to kill, but he knew the voice of God because his voice makes the difference. 
tell you before, I told you before, but let me just quickly tell you again. One of the things I hate is when my wife takes up the phone and calls me from another number and she feels the need to somehow look on and to say, oh, Omar, it's your wife. I know it's my wife because I sleep with her. Hello, somebody. I talk with her. She don't need to call me from China or from unblocked number or whatever. From she takes up the phone and I hear that voice. I know the melody. I know the tone. I know the enunciation. I Come on, somebody. The voice could be her hoarse a little bit more. When she speaks, I know the voice. When you're walking with the Lord, even when you're going astray, you will know the voice. They sinned. Ella Lawson, I'm struggling with it. Because the way your generation grew up, my generation. Maybe I should go to Ella Little and Ella Stern. The way their generation taught my generation about God makes God look less loving than God really is. And some of us, even in our age of adulthood, we have to be struggling with certain concepts about God. Is God going to be a brutal punisher? Is he going to be a, a judge who is going to just chop us down? And i like to suggest to you, if you want to get an answer to that, come with me to the book of Genesis. And I'm going to show you that even when you sin and even when you fall, Jesus will come running right after you. He will come right there with you. He will sit with you. So God came and God asked. God came. They were hiding. God came. They were feeling guilty. They were feeling shamed. But God came. They felt the results, the consequences of sin. But God came. And right here in Genesis, God changed their story. God asked them three questions. I'm over time. I'm going to be moving quickly. God asked them three questions. He asked them, where are you? That's the first question. Where are you? What's your current location? What's your current status? Do you sit and do a reflection on yourself and on your spiritual life? Do you understand where you're falling and where you're failing? Do you understand how habits are having you bound in chains of sin? Have you sat and done a year assessment and audit of your spiritual life? Not listening to pastor, not listening to elder, but in the deep recesses of the quiet of your own heart have you heard God asking you Adam where are you let me tell you something when God asks a question he's not asking to get an answer when God is asking a question it's not that he doesn't already know the answer to the question but God is asking so that we can check ourselves before we can wreck ourselves where are you question number two who told you? <laughs> Who told you that you're naked? That was question number two. Who told you you were naked? One of the characteristics of a judge is that a judge must be impartial and fear. In this text, Jesus is sitting as judge. And even though he has the answer, he asked the question. Who told you? How did you come to the realization that the glory that encircled you, the glory that was around you, the glory that protected you from the various seasons of time. How did you reach to the point you must be given a chance for a fear hearing? A fear trial. And I won't touch vibes cartels. But who told you? Who told you? Here is God putting to Adam and Eve about this fact. And he's 
quest his answer his question comes from their answer because it is their answer that said Adam said I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself so even the very question that God asks is emanating from the answer that Adam gives. That's the second question. And I put it to you, have you learned to be honest with God? You see, <laughs> these things that we adopt from England to be dressed up in jacket and tie in the Caribbean, These concepts of spirituality that are more manifested in outward than anything else. God not interested in that. I don't know what's in some of your mind. Oh, pastor, you're up there telling us we can't dress anyhow. <laughs> you will notice how I dress. Dress is never an indication of what is operational in the heart. We can be well looked and defined on the outside and the heart is deceitful and corrupt above everything else. And that's why when it comes on to the spiritual nature, God does not check the outward appearance. God is not frightened by jackets and ties. God is not sh shackled by hats and long dresses. God is checking out the motive of the heart. Let me rush on, let me rush on, because I, I need to finish. Number three, number three. Then the Lord asked them. The third question, what is this that you have done? In all instances, he already has the answer to the question, but he gives them an opportunity to respond. Then the Lord goes to the three, other three. I'll go through them real quickly. Number one, the, then the Lord speaks firstly to the serpent. Then he speaks to the woman. And then finally he speaks to Adam. So there's the initial stage. The fear trial. They got a fear trial. Somebody should say amen. Amen. There's no appeal from this court. It's a fear trial. And after the appeal, after the, um, the, the, the trial, there is the sentencing. So the Lord does the sentencing to the serpent, then to Eve, and then the Lord does this final sentencing to Adam. Watch this as I close. After that, God takes off his judicial rule. Somebody not with the preacher. I just broke you through a trial. Come on, stay with me. I said, after that, Jesus takes off his judicial robe. First was the trial. Second was the sentencing. They, they, there wasn't any need for any plea of mitigation because by their own testimony, they were guilty. So all that was left was the sentencing. But because God is not just a God of the law, because he's not just a God of justice and commandment. He takes off his judicial robe and he takes a lamb. And when he takes a lamb, he calls Adam and Eve to himself. And he says, put your sin on that lamb. And for the first time 
time ever in all of human history. All of heaven is aghast. All the angels are in silence. Heaven is watching as they are about to see the first act of death. For the wages of sin is death. That's all that was going to happen. But God didn't want Adam and Eve to die because before sin existed, there was a response to sin. There was a response that God had in place that the moment man sinned, a lamb would be provided. The moment man fell, someone would come to lift them up out of the miry clay. God took off his judicial robe. Mercy, Jesus. Come with me to the garden. As Jesus takes up a lamb. Innocent. Unblemished. Untouched. It hasn't even gotten an opportunity to run around the garden of Eden. It has not even gotten an opportunity to live for a long time. But because man fell, the animal must die. The Lord took that lamb. And he says to Adam and Eve, confess. They confess. And then right there, the Lord allowed them to slip. Neck. The blood ran down. And for the first time, Adam and Eve understood the consequence of sin. When they heard that bleating sheep utter its last cry. When they saw the drops of blood dropping down, that was the impression that was left on their heart that the wages of sin is indeed death. God did what he needed to do to clean up that lamb. <laughs> they talked that they were naked. The Lord says, if you're naked, I'm going to clothe you. He used the very skin of the lamb. And that's the first tailor. As the first dressmaker. Tailor made to fit. He made for Adam. And he made for Eve. Clothing to keep them warm. Clothing that when they were to go outside of the Garden of Eden, they would feel warmth in the midst of their pain. He made tunics of skin, says the scripture, and he clothed them. Then the Lord did two other things that I take my seed. Number one, the Lord sent them out. So after the act of sentencing, he did the act of cleansing. After the act of sentencing, he did the act of covering their sins. After the act of sin, what he did was to put them back into right standing with God. But he did something else. Tyreek. He sent them out. The sending out might not look like an act of love, but it was. The sending out might not look like an act of love, but it was. Because if Adam and Eve stayed in the Garden of Eden as sinners, no doubt they would be tempted again. Not just to continue eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but they would also eat from the tree of life. And when the sin, it touched base with the tree of life, they would become immortalized sinners. So to save man from himself. To save 
save man from himself to allow man to be redeemed to allow man to be restored back to the image of God the Lord sent them out of the garden of Eden because if they stayed in there sin would become immortalized and not even God could save them So he sent them out. And number three, as I close. God don't trust man in sinful state. So I don't know how you put in your trust in man. God says, I'm not only going to send you out. I'm going to protect you from going back in. I am going to help you to be protected against your own self. So he assigned two cherubims to stay at the east of the Garden of Eden and they had swords that were ablaze to guard the way to the tree of life. As you go to the communion table today. I know what shame feels like. I know what guilt feels like. But our shame and our guilt. Isaiah says he bore it. And though we may have beautiful clothing, we are naked before God. And I'm happy that the same man who creates me wants to recreate me. And that he knows how to deal with imperfect people. Some people can't do it. Some of you perfect wives want perfect husbands. Some of you perfect husbands want perfect wives. Some of you imperfect children want perfect parents. Some of you imperfect parents want perfect children. How we deal with people when they are imperfect is the truest sense of manifesting the love of God. So today, as you go to the communion table, remember that that Eve is you. Remember that that Adam is you. Remember that you and I are children of Adam and Eve. And even when we fail, God will still come in in the cool of day. Adam, where are you? That day in the garden, Jesus gave them love for their rebellion clothing for their fig leaf protection from their future wretched selves and gave them a new opportunity to be redeemed may that be our experience today Upon
Let us pray. Please stand as we pray. Sovereign God, it's good to know that we can call you provider. It's good to know that we can call you sustainer. It's good to know that we can call you healer. But more importantly, God, I stand to say you are my savior. Because just like Adam and Eve, because of sin, I would have been out of place. But because of your loving kindness, your tender mercies, you came in search for me. Not only to scold me for what I would have done wrong, but to provide the answer to my problem. And in providing the answer to my problem, you didn't send me to, to go and to do some acts just to, so that I can be justified. You told me that because of my action, it's so grave that you would have come. You would have to come and to die where I should have died. And God, as we partake of this bread that represents your broken body, as we partake of the wine that represents your spilt blood, God, I pray that you'll impress upon our minds that which you went through that Friday evening when your hands, they were pierced. When your feet, they were pierced. When your side, a, 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 a spear was plunged into your side. All because that I would have sinned. All because that we would have sinned. But I pray God as we eat of the bread, as we drink of the wine, that we will be reconciled unto you afresh. That just as all we would have covered Adam and Eve with the, the skin of a lamb, that you will cover us with your righteousness. Just as all we would have sent them forth from the garden, I pray God, you will send us forth to, to preach the good news of salvation to someone so that they can taste and see that you are a good God. I pray God as we partake, that our minds will reflect upon the day when we will partake of the tree of life. So that we can become eternal and we can live with you for ceaseless ages. Pray God that none of us will partake unworthily. But pray God that we'll make all wrongs right with you now if, if we need to do so. So that when we partake, we can partake of the blessing that these emblems bring. Have your own way, I pray. Continue to do the work of transformation upon our lives. This I ask in your name and your name only. Amen and Amen.
as we contemplate the beauty of the song. The Seventh-day Adventist Church practices open communion, which means that at any time that we are having communion service, if you're a baptized member of another denomination, once you've been baptized by immersion, you're free to participate. Have all been served? Ella Jolly. Scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 24. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Let's pray, Almighty God. We give you thanks and praise for the great sacrifice of sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. We give you thanks for Calvary. It stands out as that moment, that place where Jesus Christ was sacrificed for our sins. Today, we are invite you to bless this unleavened bread, symbolic of the broken body, the sinless body of Jesus Christ. We pray that as we partake of it, the significance will be riveted in our minds as we anticipate when we shall be with Jesus in the earth made new. Blessed to our bodies, health, spiritual, physical, and wellness. This I pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. That which you hold in your hand is just the symbol, we're going to do the bread now, of our Lord's broken body. We invite you, after we would have sat, with a prayer on your own heart for your redemption, E.T. all of it.
We'll continue by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. We come recognizing, O oh Lord, that the emblems we hold are but a symbolism of your spilt out blood. But we are so grateful, Lord, that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's fame. So today, Lord, as we present ourselves before you as living sacrifices, we pray that as we partake of your, this wine, symbolic of your spilt out blood, that you will do that which only you can do. Forgive us, O oh Lord, of all our transgressions, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The cup in your hand has in pure grape juice. It's not blood. It is a symbol of the blood that never loses its power. The songwriter says in the second line, the vilest offender, the vilest offender, who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. The Apostle Paul said of himself, he's the chief of sinners. May we see ourselves as such today, and with a prayer on our hearts, drink ye all of it. Sábado a todos. Vamos a cantar el himno número 426 del himnario en español. Tengo paz. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We'll sing 426, 426 from the Spanish hymnal. We'll sing to the tune, It is well with my soul.
Anglin prepares to do the offertory. I'm going to invite uh, two of our shepherdesses who are here. Um, Sister Monica Walker and Sister Kirby Oliphant to assist with the children on either sides with the grape. And Pastor Anglin will come at this time to lead us into the offertory. Jesus, he said to his disciples and to us today, from Mark chapter 14, verse 7, Jesus said, For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. The offering that is collected today will go to fulfill this command of doing good to those who are in need. I ask you, as the Spirit impressed upon your hearts, pray to provide an offering to assist those in need.
children on either side so children on this side please line up on this side to sister walker so you don't have to be crossing and this side with sister oliphant so you don't have to be crossing the church of God say amen if you are refreshed at the feet of Christ today let me hear you say praise the Lord we want to thank in a very special way today our deacons and our deaconesses let me go again seeing that you didn't know that's where I was going we want to thank in a very special way today our deacons and deaconesses. Amen. In particular, I want to single out Deacon Ransford Ricketts, who it's a very difficult time, and I saw he was battling to hold up. So we'll say a prayer for you before we leave today, Deacon Ricketts. We want to say thanks to our musicians. I want to say a very special thanks to our senior church choir. My choir. Very special thank you to our communications team. And even though he's seated in the pew, I want to say thanks to all my elders, including Elder Trevor Little. 
Elder Laurel Jolly as well. A very special thank you to our Eldership Corps and Leadership Corps, uh, the females and or males who have participated in our service today. It's 10 past 12. The added time is on me today because I went a little bit longer than I intended to. So forgive me. I'm going to invite you at this time to stand. I will do the benedictory prayer. I will make my exit. I will not be shaking hands at the door today because I'm going right away to do baptisms for New Kingston. We have about eight persons for baptism today. So I'm going to invite you to stand. Brother, the church, I was made aware after pastor's time of the passing of Brother Barnett, our former deacon, Cecil Barnett. And so I want to let that be registered by the church family. And I'm going to ask Ella Little to do the prayer for Deacon Ricketts, as well as um, Brother Barnett's family members, and Marie Goldburn, as they go through this particular period of their lives. Now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God, our Savior, who alone is right, wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Remain standing as Elder Trevor Little does a special prayer. Deacon Ricketts. Shall we bow heads? Our Heavenly Father, we stand here this afternoon to thank you for the, the mountaintop experience we had today. We were truly blessed. And the prayer of my heart is that we shall leave from this place to walk in the newness of life. We pray in a very special way for our friend and brother, Brother Ransford Ricketts, who lost his brother. It's never an easy thing for you to lose a sibling, somebody you grew up with. And notwithstanding that Brother Ransford does not mourn like those without hope. Nonetheless, we understand his grief. And so in a very special way, we pray that your Holy Spirit might come divinely and abundantly near to him to encircle him and to encourage him. I pray that you will touch the hearts of those of us who are physically here so that we too might press close to Brother Ransford and support him during this time of loss. And then to Sister Anne-Marie and the family of Brother Barrett, Barnett, we pray the same. We Father, we, we recognize that right now, as we speak and as we reflect on the message, that we are literally camping on the borders of the kingdom. This is no time to, to lose our way. Because if we do, there is a very good chance that we will not have enough time to get back on track and so I pray your blessings on this congregation 
May we use this opportunity to renew our covenant. And may we also, like the Holy Spirit, seek to encourage those who have lost their ones. But above all, dear Lord, it is our sincere prayer that every last person in the hearing of my voice, both those who are in sanctuary and those who are joining on us online, we pray that they will make this, use this moment to make their calling an election sure so that when you shall come, all of us will be counted among those who will be saved. This we humbly pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join in singing, never, never part again. At the singing of the third verse, you will be ushered out. Yeah. 